What's going on guys? I'm Danny Kyderling here today with uh, Western Welding Academy. Today we're going to play around on a MIG machine. I got Colton Constance. He's uh, one of our students here from Western Welding Academy. Colton, tell everyone a little bit about yourself. So I'm 18 from Missouri. I started in June and I'm doing pretty good. So. Yeah. One of our pretty good students here on our first shift. Uh, so I guess today we're going to do a little MIG root. Um, we're going to be doing a, a MIG process in general. We're going to throw a MIG, MIG uh, root through here. We're going to stay right on the edge of that puddle. 035, we're going to run just 75, 25. Pretty standard what you're actually going to see out there in a fab shop. They're going to be running these roots on, um, on the lower end. Uh, you don't have the specialty wires, stuff like that. You're just going to run a short circuit root, and then we're going to throw a, a uphill fill with hard wire. Same step. We're not even hardly changing the machine, just turn that amperage down. Uh, it's a little crude, but it always gets the job done and it's done and it's actually a really strong process. So, so what we're going to need to start out, we're going to need an eighth inch filler metal um, so we can throw a gap in this thing. You got a eighth inch filler metal? Let's go grab one. Should be one. Hey, let's just use this 532. So first thing when you're doing an open root, Colton, um, when you're doing an open root, you want to use a, a gap strap. Uh, Sometimes when you're running short circuit, actually it is better to run a wider uh, root opening. Um, 532 is actually optimal. Uh, eighth inch if you got specialty like purge or specialty processes like pulse and stuff like that. Um, with this, we're on a 532. So you just set this, you just bend, bend a regular wire into a, a, a V basically. Um, this is something that you can just use on pretty much anything. Throw it in your toolbox, you always have it kind of thing. Um, so yeah. We're going to set this on here now. Now we're going to get our fit up. Set that bad boy right here. Get our high-low, right? You know what high-low is, right? What is that, Colton? It's your uh, difference in pipes. So, like, yeah. it'd be, so if you have a bad foot up, you can have like high on this side, low on that side. It's just pretty self-explanatory. Yep. So your high-low here, you can always check too. get a ruler, and if this has got high-low in it, you're not going to fit up perfect. So you got to check your high-low here. Anything works, really. You can use a tape. Uh, a wedge, anything, um, try to get that high-low set just right all the way around. Sometimes on the bigger diameters you gotta adjust a little bit out, out of it, but you try to get it close, basically. Did you? And so now we'll get, get our machine set right. You're gonna wanna run it fairly cold. Um, let's get this guy set up. Is it? Was it running uh, hot or screaming hot? Or? Dang, what, why is it turned down so low? That's, that'll work actually, if it's what it is. Were you guys running vertical up with it? No, I was running this one. Okay. Okay. So first of all, when we're starting out, um, you're gonna wanna start tacking. You're gonna wanna tack your first quadrant. Um, usually you wanna run about a half inch to an inch tack. Uh, I usually start on one side, I usually try to get the more tighter side, like a tight 532. You run that first little tack, about a half inch. You're going to come across directly 180 degrees, which would be right here. So I call it 12 o'clock and then 6 o'clock, like on a clock. And you're going to tack here and you're going to run another tack, same size. And then you're going to jump over to the other side and run another. Basically, you're going to have 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 3 o'clock, and 9 o'clock quadrants, squares of that, of that circle, that pipe, right? So I might have you adjusting that. Did we turn that gas on? Yeah, I turned it off. I, I turned, turned it off earlier. I turned it, I turned it off. Okay. So usually on that very first tack, you kind of like buzz it. Kind of buzz tack weld it. Kind of tack, tack, make that bridge almost like a bridge tack. And then you're going to just kind of walk it along there. And if this machine, if we got her set right, which that looks about right, you can kind of throw it in there. And you throw that weld in there. And you can kind of just almost walk your nozzle in that if you got that set just like perfect. Just like you would with TIG with pressure feed. Okay. Except this way, instead of going forward, you're walking backwards now. You're walking down, you're dragging, basically. Does that make sense? Yeah. Turn that thing down. A little better. And if you do this right, it'll actually look just like a uh, just like a TIG root. 
They're looking there nice and pretty and um, tight. Um, yeah, so if you're running hard wire, uh, like stainless steel MIG, yeah, you'll purge it. But carbon, you wouldn't want to purge carbon. There's no, ne not exactly necessary to purge carbon. So now we got six o'clock yep. or 12 o'clock. Now we're going to tack six o'clock here. And usually what I'll have you do is what I'm going to have you do here is I'm going to have you put this wire in here and hold my tack. And if you, want it, if you want it to be wider or tighter, you can lift up on that and make it wider. But we want to just stick with 532, so I'm going to have you go down with it. Okay, actually, um, I'm going to swap sides with you. Um, come around to this side of me, and I'm going to have you throw one on, run it in there. Okay, do you like that? About a 532. Oh yeah, roughly. Yep, so it's pulled a whole lot. So let's run that tack that way, okay? okay. See how much it pulled? Yeah. So whatever your side your gap is on, when your gap, see how you got a wide gap here and a tight one here? Uh -huh. You're going to want to pull your gap. Yeah. You're going to want to pull your wire towards the wide gap and it'll close that gap up a little bit. Okay. You good? Yep, you're going to want to bridge that gap. Don't get close. Yep. There you go. Just like that. Get back a ways. Yep. And you're doing it right. You think you're not. But as you're going, you just kind of wiggle that, wiggle that wire just like pressure feed. You want to stay right on the edge of that leading puddle, basically. Real okay. simple. Okay. So now, so we got our high-low. We got our 6 and 12. Now we're going to have to see if we need to wedge something or what we're going to do. We want to get that gap on each side even. Usually one side will be a little wider. We'll have to wedge it. But let's look here. It's not bad, honestly. This side's a little wider. So was um, it on your wide side or your tight side? Um, we're, well, with this one, we're probably just going to want to throw a uh, wedge in it. Can you go grab your wedge? Yeah, go grab a wedge. Yeah, go grab your wedge. So yeah, so here's, this is our tight side, okay. so we're going to want to put a wedge on our tight side. So we're going to want to wedge it and get that even. Look at that gap, look down in there and you're going to see which gap is wider. Now be gentle now. Don't get too crazy. And leave it just a skosh wider because when you weld it, it's going to pull it tight just a little. Yeah, I think so, huh? Yeah. I think so. I love that. Let's, uh, why don't you throw a tack in it? So you're going to want to do it exactly at 3 o'clock, so basically the next quarter of that pipe, in between your 6 and 12 o'clock tacks. Now this one's going to go in there like butter. You're just going to stay right on that edge and lay it back a little bit. Okay. Yep. Always start on that top, though. Yep. Back out of that with your nozzle. Yep, you're good. Keep going. You're doing it. That's exactly how you should do it. So if it starts falling in on you, that's when you go a little wider. Back that nozzle up. Okay, that's a good tack. Good job. Let's look at that inside, huh? So now we got our wedge in here. It's starting to loosen up. See that? Yep. This looks just like a tig root. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna run one real quick. I want to get a feel on her. Now I got my, I got my six, I got my six o'clock, twelve o'clock, and then our three o'clock basically welded up. I got tacks and all them. We're gonna throw another tack right here. Okay. running a little hot. Can we bump it down? Good as long as I haven't uh, as long as I wasn't throwing wire in that inside. 
Turn it down just a little more. Okay. Yep. For a couple. Couple bolts. And then uh, go grab your grinder too. So we got our tacks in. We got six o'clock, all our quadrants, noon, all the way through three o'clock, nine o'clock, all tacked up. Got nice heavy tacks in there. It's not going to fall out on you. Nothing's going to crack or break. Now we're going to want to take our uh, grinding wheel and we're going to want to feather those tacks. You're going to want to feather them almost like you would with TIG. You want to basically have a knife edge all the way around and onto that weld, basically. So here, I'm going to show you here. We're going to um, throw a little knife edge on this bad boy. Okay, so same thing. You kind of know how to do that with little with what you've done with TIG. Um, it's a lot the same. Knife edge, bigger gap, nice and ni nice and even. Not, you don't want to grind through that whole tack either. You want to have something that meat to tie into basically. You want that meat there, um, it, but you want that knife edge on the very edge so you can tie into the edge of your bevel and then tie into that tack real nice when you come to it. Um, so let's do the same thing with the rest of these tacks. I don't want you to give that a try. Yep. Don't get too much out of that bevel, just stay right on the edge of that puddle. Grind that tack out. Yep. Yes, sir. Yep, just like that. Hit that one too, would you? Son, look at that. You know, if you you never make it as a, a welder, you could always make it as a welder's helper, right? Mm -hmm. You did a good job. Or weld inspector. Or if you're not, if you can't make it as a welder, you always can make it as a weld inspector for sure. You're not 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 joking either. That's for real. Okay. So we're gonna do a little recap here, Colton. So what we have here, we got a, we're doing a hardwire 70s6 root. That's, that's pretty, pretty common out there in the industry. We're just doing a short, short circuit. circuit. You're gonna to wanna to turn your voltage down a little bit, like I said. You're gonna to wanna to stay on the edge of that puddle like we've seen in them tacks. Also, when you're tacking up, you're gonna to wanna to use an eighth inch to a 532 gap, right? Um, and you're gonna to wanna to put how many tacks in it? Four. Four tacks. And how are you gonna place them tacks? You can put all four on one side. No, you're gonna put them in their own quadrants. 12, 6, 3, and 9. 12, 6, 3, and 9. So usually you start on one side. Wherever you pick that nice 532 gap, that's where you start. And then you're going to run your other tack directly 180 degrees back on the other side. And then you're going to basically split that again. You think of it as a clock, you're 12, 6, 3, and 9. So after our tacks are in, we're going to get our, uh, all your tacks ground. A nice, nice grind on each start and the stop of that tack so you can get that nice tie in basically, right? Cool. Okay, so we got this like this. Let's uh, probably throw this in a 5G position. We'll just kind of come off the edge here. Throw it in a 5G and weld it out, huh? Cool. Okay.